The new use function originally promised that we could fetch data like this with integrations with suspense for showing a loader and error boundaries for displaying errors so that we can leave this mayhem once and for all. So let's find out if the actual use function released in React 19 lives up to the promise and hybrid generated more than two years ago when it first got announced. We have a fresh feed up where we fit some data about upcoming Premier League football games. And yes, it's called football, not the S word for the Americans watching. And display them in this lovely table. If it was a real world application, we'd want to use something like TenStack Query for data fetching, but without a third party library, React doesn't provide us with better primitives for fetching data. So we'll have to write this boilerplate code. We need to keep track of the loading state, error state, and we have a use effect, which is never a good sign. Well, we need to do all this until Rec 19 and the use function. What the use function does, and it is a function, not a hook, you won't find it in the hook section in the React docs, since it doesn't follow the rules of a hook because it can be called conditionally, but more on that later. Anyways, what it does is that it accepts a promise, and once the promise is pending, it suspends the component where it's called, meaning that it triggers the fallback of the closest suspense boundary. And if the promise throws an error and it gets rejected, it'll trigger the nearest error boundary to show the error UI. Let's give it a shot and rewrite our component to leverage this new magic bestowed upon us by the React team. We'll first wrap the component where we fetch our data, which is the app component, in suspense and provide a loader as fallback. Then we'll do the same, but with an error boundary this time around. And I'm using the React error boundary package because I'm too lazy to write the error boundary myself. But either one will do the trick. And finally, the most satisfying part is going inside of the app folder and replacing whopping 28 lines of code with a single line of cons fixtures is equal to use fetch fixtures which will automatically integrate with the suspense and error boundaries and give us the upcoming fixtures when they've been fetched, at least in theory. Let's save the file to test the code out. We will see that not only the loader never disappears and the actual content doesn't get shown, but we've also basically started a DOS attack onto the server where we want to fetch our data from, as React enters some sort of an infinite loop scenario and keeps calling our fetch fixtures function indefinitely. So let's quickly close the tab and talk about what happened and how we can fix it. What can give us a hint to what's going on is that if we change our fetch fixtures function to return an empty array immediately, instead of making a waiting for the actual API call, React will show this warning. A component was suspended by an uncached promise. Creating promises inside of client components or hook is not yet supported, except via a suspense compatible library or framework. According to the docs, this warning should always be shown, but I believe there's a bug in React where this warning doesn't get shown unless the promise passed to the use function resolves immediately, which is not the case with the actual fetch request. Anyways, React docs also provide guidance on how to fix this warning. To fix it, you need to pass a promise from a suspense code library or framework that supports caching for promises. In the future, we plan to ship features to make it easier to cache promises in render. What the problem boils down to is that React needs us to ensure that we don't pass a newly created promise to the use function every time React re-renders our component, but rather only create the promise once, add it to a cache, and when the component re-renders, we retrieve it from the cache instead. So let's create a brand new 12 line 10 stack query competitor that handles the caching just as we are expects. First, we'll create a promise cache to store our promises and we'll be fancy and use a map to hold them. Next, let's create a use query function which will accept two arguments. The first one is a function which when called will return a promise and let's use unknown for now. The second one is key, which we'll use to label the promise returned from the fn function so that we can store it and retrieve it using that key. 
And now onto the body of the function. If the promise cache doesn't have a cached promise for given key, we'll create a new cache entry with that key and store the promise created by calling the fn in it. Then we can retrieve the promise from the cache as it now should be there regardless if it had already been there when the use query was invoked or if it just be added to the cache. We then pass the cached promise to the use function and TypeScript is very angry with us because the promise variable can theoretically be undefined. But since we always create a new cache entry if there isn't one for a given key, we can add a cheeky as promise unknown to fix it. And finally, we return the result. So let's now use the use query in our component. We change use to use query. We wrap the fetch fixtures in a function and pass it as the fn argument. And we provide a key for the cache. And there's one last TypeScript squiggly line to fix, which is because the fixtures variable is of type unknown as we use promise unknown in our use query function. Fortunately, TypeScript generics come to the rescue. We can introduce a new generic argument t, which we can use instead of unknown to instruct TypeScript that we should get back the result value of the same promise that our fn function returns. Finally, the moment of truth. We can go to the fetch fixtures function, remove the hard-coded return, save the file. We can see the loader appear for a split second, and then we see the list of fixtures. And let's test that our error boundary works as well. If we change the URL where we fetch the data from to some gibberish, so it throws an error, we see the error UI. We aren't done yet though, we're just getting started as we've got two more use cases of the use function to cover, and they are substantially simpler, I promise. We'll switch to Next.js for the rest of the video so that we have access to server components, but we'll be using the very same example UI we're fetching the Premier League fixtures. We'll start with this. We fetch the fixtures in the page server component and pass them as props to the fixtures component which is a client component that renders the UI. What the use function lets us do is that instead of accepting the actual array of data from the server component, we can accept a promise that results with the data instead, and we can pass it to the use function to suspend the component until the promise gets resolved. On the server, we'll remove the await from the promise and pass the not yet resolved promise to the fixtures component instead of passing the actual data. So let's save the file and test out if it works or if we'll get another error. And it works, but how so given we don't have any cache for our promises? Since we're not creating the promise in a client component, but in a server component instead, and we accept the promise as the props of the client component, we don't need to cache it on the client side, as when the client side component re-renders, no new promise will be created, as the promise from the props will only be created once on the server. Essentially, the server component is serving as the cache for the promises. Now the most important question is, but why the heck would we want to pass a promise from the server component to the client component? instead of simply awaiting the promise on the server, like we did initially? That's a great question that neither I nor React Docs have a good answer to, but I'll try anyways. When we move the data fetching from the server component to our child client component, we don't block rendering of our server component until our promise is resolved, and we can immediately display some other UI that doesn't need the data from the promise like this beautiful heading, and we can also wrap the client component where we await the promise in suspense to show a loader whilst the data is fetching. This will result in the heading appearing instantly along with the loader, and once the promise is resolved, the rest of the UI appears. However, we could achieve the same user experience by turning the fixtures component when we use the use function to wait for the promise into a server component 
and using regular async await syntax to fetch the data without the need to accept the promise as props. And when we do that, it leads to the exact same user experience with the heading and loader appearing instantly. That said, turning the client component into a server component wouldn't be possible if we had some client-only APIs like useState, useEffect, or event listeners, unless we wanted to create a server component wrapper, so it might be useful in those scenarios. So let's change it back to a client component. And finally, the most straightforward use case. We can use the use function to read data from React context. So let's say we have this context provider that holds information about our favorite team. Let's say it's born move, but I won't reveal my actual favorite team as I don't want to get dislikes on my video from the opposing fans. And in the fixtures component, we can use favorite team context instead of use context favorite team context, which says our seven characters, and then use the favorite team variable to display a heart emoji next to our favorite team. But reading from context using the use function is not only about fewer characters, but since use is not a hook, we can also call it conditionally. So if we add a boolean prop to control if we want to highlight our favorite team or not, we can then conditionally assign either the context value or null to our variable to control if you want our favorite team to be highlighted or not. Let me know what you think about the use function. I'd be curious to hear what your opinions are. Take care.